I end up having my first real huge panic attack okay. and she was there and they ended up like breaking down and I was like okay I actually need to tell someone so yeah. I ended up telling her about my anxiety and depression okay. and self-harm and yeah. mm -hmm. which was really hard because like you do feel so vulnerable and naked yes. and I was like are you, you going to look at me differently? Yeah. Are you still going to be my best friend? Like, mm -hmm. are you going to pity me? I don't want I'm pity. Crazy. Yes. Yeah. And like all that stuff. And yeah. so she was like, we need to go talk to Courtney. So the That's Panera awesome. Bread on uh, West End yes, <laughs> sat in a okay. booth and I just poured out to Courtney. <laughs> and it was the start of me unlocking my freedom. Hey, Freedom family. Welcome to the Unlock Your Freedom podcast. My name is Kira Miller. I am the founder and host of this series. Every other week, we'll bring you some of the most life-giving conversations that will empower you to overcome your shame, own your truth, and unlock your freedom. Thank you for joining this conversation today. Now let your freedom journey begin. Hey, Freedom Family. Welcome back to the Unlock Your Freedom podcast. My name is Kira Miller, and I am the founder and host of this series. If you really feel crippled by shame and you desire freedom, I think you're going to find this conversation that I had with Vanderbilt soccer player Gabrielle Rademacher today very just empowering, and I think you're going to learn a lot from this. I had never met her before, and literally like from the moment that she walked into the room, through the entire conversation, I literally felt like I was talking to myself. We were pretty much the exact same person in every sense of the word, same personality type, same, like she studied social work, I studied social work, very similar story because I struggle with a lot of shame in my life and thinking that certain parts of me weren't okay and uh, that I, I couldn't talk about them because they were too dark and she had like a very, very similar experience to that. And so I'm just super excited for you guys to hear how she talked about um, just how like shame really silenced her for the longest time and how she's now finally owning her truth and really talking about that and how she has unlocked her freedom with that. So yeah, super excited for you guys to check it out. Here we go. Who would you say Gabrielle Rademacher was in like your, in the beginning of your journey with shame? Um, I would say I was pretty paralyzed girl. Mm, I like that word. And um, I was so consumed with if I was going to mess up or how people like perceived who I was. Mm -hmm. So in school, um, I was, I know we like people say masks and that's very relatable. Yeah. So I just put layers and layers of masks on mm -hmm. and just, from a young age. Yeah. Really? From, Cause like I was the superstar athlete yeah. and, um, I thought it had to be a certain way for people to like me or be popular mm. and, yep. and it's very tiring. It is. So I just felt like I was lost Come. before and I was so ashamed of my shame mm -hmm. and so I like hid all of that I had so many secrets and yeah. um yeah I just felt very inauthentic and yeah. kind of like a fraud I wasn't who I thought I was supposed to be yeah I feel that well and you said paralyzed is like such a good word because when I was telling you this but when I shared my story it's like the one word that came to mind for me well I guess it's a phrase it's ran away mm -hmm. like I ran away from everything of who I was mm -hmm. I masked it but I also was like I know this thing about me and I don't like it and yeah. so I'm going to mask it and I'm also going to run away from it by like being someone I'm yeah. not and if it's not there and you don't like then it's like it's not true yeah yeah so did you feel like awkward around people a lot? oh yeah I got really? that a lot so people that was one thing I was like mm -hmm. I hated when people called me that and they're like you're awkward and now I embrace it and I love yeah. it because it's who I am it's who you are and now some people piece are like, of who you are yes yeah <laughs> and yeah so they're like you're so awkward and you know weird and no you're not dude was, <laughs> <"Thank> you. <laughs> no but I was like okay like how do you respond to that so then I was like yeah. okay well I have to be like this cool person in and mm -hmm. wear this and do this and yeah for people to like me because I'm like we all have to be the same that's yes. what I felt like so yeah so even from a young age like you remember this like how oh, young yeah. would you say that you can look back and be like okay I can I kind of see that from so teenager oh gosh kind of fifth grade fifth grade so, okay uh, yeah so got bullied a lot for like soccer yeah and um I had this girl come up to me and it was my first time in public school and she mm -hmm. was like you need to lose the race for like a fifth grade thing 
and I was like, you need to lose the race because she's won every year and it was my first time coming in. And so I was like, oh, I have to be friends with them. So, so you did. mm, Well, I, she ended up, I like ended up like crying to my mom. I was like, you're acting different. I'm like, I don't want to go to school today. And, Mm. um, the other girl ended up pretending she was sick and I was like, just do what you can. Like, and so. So you want it? Yeah. Nice. Fifth grade, you know, (laughs) turkey trot. It was great. But ever since then I started like diminishing who I was to fit Mm. in with other people and to make sure everyone liked me. So I just kind of like would play myself down or hide certain things about me or kind of like not talk because if I did, people would be like, oh, you're so awkward and Mm. say weird things. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore because I was just so taken aback that like how people were in fifth grade at such a young age and ever since then it was the same Mm -hmm. so especially around that age too people are mean yes like I feel like it starts in fifth grade and then it like obviously lasts through teenage years Mm -hmm. but even like high school and college it totally can too yeah I like how old are you uh 21 okay I'm 25 and I will say it gets better (laughs) (laughs) it's a blessing thank you I don't know if people get nicer but I think you get surrounded by better people as Mm -hmm. you age which it sounds like you probably are definitely yeah Yeah. and people that accept you and love you for who you are and then and if they don't then you're old enough to be like I don't want to be a part of your life exactly so So what would you say maybe like some voices in your head were like growing up because you talked you said already awkward Mm -hmm. but what else do you feel like people were saying that you really held on to? Um, my biggest one was not good enough because mm. um, I did come from a family and I had f- f- like three older brothers and then we're a very like blended family. So oh. set brothers and stuff like mm-hmm. that and half brothers. Um, but they were geniuses. And so yeah. even my parents were like, oh, like you're just good at ath- athletics. Like yes. you're not as smart as your brothers. Yep. And so I'm like, okay, well, I'm not good enough at school yep. or um, I'm – growing up trying to get a scholarship for soccer and Mm -hmm. I mean there's a lot of rejection and coaches telling you the honest truth and so that was a big thing like my voices in my head was I'm not good enough for the school or I'm not good enough to play soccer I'm not good enough to take these classes or Mm -hmm. be friends with these people and so I hated going to parties I never went um I told you I ended up missing over 52 percent of high school yeah um so that was me hiding because I was paralyzed Mm -hmm. by the fear rejection not being good enough and those were all the things that were going on in my head Mm -hmm. so instead of having to face them I just like hid and I stayed home and like so that was kind of like a panic attack probably like a very extreme one yeah Yeah. I I, my first start panic attacks didn't happen until um senior year and like freshman year of college but it was more just like I was so like drained Mm -hmm. from like all the voices and all like my own insecurities I'm like I why do I have to go through them people don't want to see like if I don't have to see them kind of thing which wasn't the great way to think about it but I mean that's what happens yeah and you're in tunnel vision like you Mm -hmm. don't see it until you're out of it yes absolutely and so what would you say when you were maybe in high school like talk about how you probably were starting to make the decision to like go to college to play soccer and stuff like how did that play into maybe the voices in your head because you were so you were known like as an athlete a very good athlete but not the best student and you were well you were just telling me how you wanted to go to Vanderbilt Mm -hmm. to kind of prove people that you could actually be smart so um I was like I was captain of the soccer team in high school only known as an athlete okay um because I miss school a lot, people are like, how are you doing well in school? Yeah. And yeah, How'd you stay on the soccer team? That's um, a real question. Yeah, I don't know how I really got through everything. <laughs> I mean, got a few letters that I like was like family services. <laughs> <laughs> My mom never saw those. Interesting. Um, and, um, but like I did really well in school because I was okay. like, my whole thing with school is like if you work hard, you're going to be fine. Yes. And absolutely. so I ended up getting straight A's okay. and even like my AP classes, even yeah. though I didn't go. Yeah. And so I was able to, like, slip through, especially okay. in public schools. It's pretty easy. It is, yeah. And my school wasn't that great. Yeah. But – um, and for soccer, like, if you are an impact player, I guess, mm-hmm. like, they kind of let you slide more. So I was, like, yeah. able to do that. And, like, my passion was soccer, so all I really cared yeah. about was soccer. So even if I missed school, I would go to soccer practice and for both high school and club. Yeah. Um, But so, like you said, to prove people wrong, I was like, well, I'm going to go to a good academic school, mm-hmm. play soccer – excel and yeah. when soccer's over i'll have something that 
does put me on top because this is gonna like pave a pathway for me to be successful in yep. the workforce because mm-hmm. soccer doesn't last forever right. and so I was trying to be realistic with it and yeah. trying to find someone because I was so focused on soccer that was my whole identity mm-hmm. so it's like I want to be something more than that and like yeah. show people I wasn't just a soccer player yeah because that was a big I guess like not demon of mine but it just made me so angry that everyone just saw me as a soccer player i was like i'm a human being like i'm not just that it's crazy how we don't see the dimensions like all of the facets all of the dimensions of each other like we Mm -hmm. literally just pigeonhole ourselves and people pigeonhole each other into one or two categories almost it seems like like you're either smart you're dumb you're good athlete good student and like that's it. Why can't we just be everything? I guess that's who we are. Yeah. Why can't we just be humans? It's we have multi dimensions. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't get it. Mm-hmm. So okay, and then you went to college. Yes. And did you have a hard time at first at Vanderbilt or not? Really? Um. So funny thing. So people are like, some people were a little like upset that I got into Vanderbilt because of being an athlete. Interesting. And they're like. I would say some things are like, oh, like Vanderbilt academics, like you're going to Vanderbilt yeah. and stuff like that. And I was like, actually, yeah, I am. Yeah, like, thanks exactly. For that. And I'm so, but it did it. like make me feel insecure and yeah. like, uh, but getting here, it was kind of um, the same as high school. Okay. So there is a divide between um, the students and the student athletes. Okay. And it's the same thing. They think that you're an athlete, so they don't think you're smart right. or they don't think you're going to do Absolutely. well. And so that was a big change. Mm-hmm. Um, but soon they started realizing that we are just going to put in the same amount of effort and help out and yeah. it gets better. Um, but I ended up tearing my ACL uh, a day before our first game my freshman year. Yeah. And so that was a big change. Because, a day before? Oh, my oh gosh. gosh. I know. And I was having like a great preseason yeah. and I was feeling good. I was so oh. happy to be out of Florida and like yep. away from that whole thing. Yeah. And like, I'm like, I'm going to start going to New school. Chapter. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I'm going to be like who I want to be. Yeah. And then my whole identity of that soccer God player just got your identity oh, right from you. Oh, yes. And he was like, Gabby, <laughs> yeah. this is your time to actually look towards me and yes. like find your faith. Oh, so yeah. I didn't grow up religious and I didn't okay. find my faith until freshman year of college okay. after I tore my ACL. Okay. It's funny how he does that. I know, right? Um, but yeah. So. so, okay, talk about that then. Like, so obviously you tore your ACL, mm-hmm. probably had surgery, and you mm-hmm. had to be. For the most part, probably fairly like bedridden. Uh, yeah. Um, pretty painful. Yeah. Um, just a lot of rehab. Mm-hmm. You just I was only on crutches for about two weeks. I think wasn't like horrible. Okay. But couldn't play. Yeah. For my this injury took me about fifteen months to get back. And Dang, I was, yeah, so okay. it was a pretty long recovery. Did you feel then. pretty isolated too? Yeah. Yeah. And so my whole thing was just like putting on a great face, smiling, yeah. telling everyone think everyone everything's going to be okay and mm-hmm. I wasn't like hurting or sad or whatever. Yeah. So I was like that positive person. Yes. But I didn't realize until two upperclassmen were like come with us to Bible study. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize like how empty I was until I got there cuz like Did you dislike God before that or did you just yeah. not really have an opinion? Um I like believed in him. I knew there was like a higher power and okay. I would like to speak to him sometimes yeah. and like hey like help me with this yeah. task kind of thing. So you kind of always yeah. explored your own faith. Then. Yeah. yeah. And like okay. and I didn't realize like the true relationship that you could have with God yeah. and how like amazing and loving he is yep. and um so when they brought me there, I was like, you're a shell of a person. Like, I'm just a happy face. And that was it. Hmm. And I wasn't really accepting what I was going through or allowing myself to really feel all the different emotions that human beings are supposed to have. Yeah. And until I started growing in my faith. Dang. So. Okay. And so when he sort of stripped your identity from you, mm-hmm. like, how was, how like exposing was that, honestly? Uh, so I was telling you, like... You feel naked. You do. Like, it's... That's exactly how I would describe it. You literally feel naked. Mm -hmm. I think that's how I describe my own story was you feel naked. It's the most vulnerable. And I used to think vulnerability and all of that was a weakness until Mm. I realized that, like, it is God's strength. Yes. Like, he finds your weakness as strength. And Mm -hmm. I think vulnerability is one of the most powerful and one of the most strengthening things that someone could have. And it influences and it other people. You. Yes. yes. It connects you with like, other people yes. so much. And then you're able to figure out truly who you are as a person. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> so, like, you had to learn how to be vulnerable with yourself mm-hmm. in that time. Yes. You had to learn how to be, like, share that with other people, yes. too, would you um, say? I took a little bit for that. Okay. Because um, 
I think it sounds like the next step, I think, of your journey yes. is like starting to understand depression and anxiety, mm-hmm. right? Okay. So I remember you like asking like with one of the questions, it was like, when did you first, first start realizing it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that wasn't until senior year when I like couldn't okay. get out of bed, didn't want to go to school. Okay. But I thought I could just like fight it off. And yeah. I was like, it was like and me being who I am now, I realized it was my pride and ego and I mm-hmm. didn't want people to know about it. Yeah. And I was like, oh no, I'm the strong you person. Could do it yourself. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I don't need help from anyone. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, why did God put so many people on this earth to do it alone? I like know. you need help from other people. Yes. And that's not a weakness. Like knowing that you no. need help is such a strength. It is a strength. And so it's I didn't a huge yeah. strength. And so like just going through senior year, I was like, Yeah, I don't need that. Um, what's medicine? I don't need medicine. Yeah. Um, it started getting really bad to the point where I was like hurting myself yeah. and just not doing mm-hmm. great things Absolutely. and it was just self-destructive mm-hmm. um but it wasn't until my sophomore year of college um we go on these fca retreats okay um and it's in february and it's just basically a time to like praise god mm-hmm. and worship and meet other people and a lot of them don't some don't believe some don't even know why they're there okay. other people are very strong in their faith yeah. and it's just like a mosh podge of college kids and a lot of college athletes wait what is fca i've totally heard that uh, fellowship times. of christian athletes that's right okay mm-hmm. And so um, I ended up going there my sophomore year again, and they're all talking about shame and mm. like, what's your huge sin that you hide? Interesting. And it was the most powerful thing. And we would write our sin or our like shame mm-hmm. in the sand, and then you would like wash it away. Interesting. Yes, because that's what God does to yes. you. Yes. And so they're just talking about how like if you keep your shame inside of you and you have that silence they're like chains Mm -hmm. and it's not until that you voice it and show god and voice like just get it out of you that you break those chains and you start healing yes and so that was i not a crier you can ask any of my friends i don't cry and that was the first time i just broke down i was like the most vulnerable and i just felt so naked and just it's so cool but it's like but then afterwards, like, you feel so, cl- like, clothed with, yeah. like, strength and dignity. It's, like, one of my favorite vowel verses. Mm-hmm. And so, like, even though I did feel naked, yeah. the first time, like, you feel, like, sick to your stomach. We're yeah. talking about, like, telling your, st- like, story and, like. It's, like, that vulnerability yes, and everything that yes. people talk and you, about. And, and then afterwards, you're, like, why did I just tell someone that? Like, yes. what are they going to think of me? And I'm, mm-hmm. like, I told um, Courtney, who's, like, our woman and minister. Okay. And, like, she does the Bible study and yeah. is the big reason why I have grown through healing and now okay. I'm unlocking my freedom. Yes. <laughs> and um, so that's just a big part of my life. And So you yeah. told her about like depression and anxiety? She, so she okay. was my first person I ever told. Okay. Well, besides, so I never really had relationships. Like okay. I had like acquaintances or yeah. like friends, yeah. but like they didn't really know anything. Like no one ever met my family, knew what the inside of my house looked like. Okay. Yes. Dude, I'm kind of the same. I like like they met my family, but yeah. like, For some reason, and my friend actually, not yelled at me for this, but just kind of was like, Kira, you need to invite people into your house. Like, that's a very intimate thing. Mm -hmm. You need to, like, know, let people in. And I'm just like, Mm. but I just, it's my introverted space, which I think you understand. Yes. And I was just so ashamed. I didn't realize. I'm, like, embarrassed. And, yeah. um, But it wasn't until my relationship with God that I met my best friend, Megan. Okay. And through the injuries and everything, it just shows you, like, he puts you through all these things to really, like, open you up and Mm -hmm. just show you that you are loved and just like have so many other blessings. And so she, I end up having my first real huge panic attack and she was there and ended up like breaking down. And I was like, okay, I actually need to tell someone. So I ended up telling her about my anxiety and depression and self-harm and Mm -hmm. which was really hard because like you do feel so vulnerable and naked. And I was like, are you going to look at me differently? Yeah. Are you still going to be my best friend? Like, mm-hmm. are you going to pity me? I Do you don't think want I'm pity. Crazy? Yes. Yeah. And like all that stuff. And so yeah. she was like, we need to go talk to Courtney. So the That's Panera awesome. bread on uh, West End yes, <laughs> sat in a okay. booth and I just poured out to Courtney. <laughs> and it was the start of me unlocking my freedom. Okay. Yeah. Was it really hard, like in the conversation though? Yes. I would stop and I would sit there and like I like fiddle and like would like like just do weird things and then it was just it was it was like so hard like you couldn't get it out yeah and so but dude it's funny though because I like I've always been okay with crying Mm -hmm. and I've always been I've been I've been telling my story with people for yeah four or five years probably but like it was actually the day that I was supposed to tell my story on my podcast that like I ended up 
fully breaking down like I had never had before. So I was supposed to have it on like a day in December, I think. And I I ended up getting really sick. So oh, I God. didn't get to tell it on that day. Well, I ended up telling it like in January. Okay. So it's all good now. It's <laughs> out. But like I ended up hanging out with my friend right before I was supposed to have my podcast that day, oh. essentially. But at that point, I think I, I had already canceled it because I was sick. And I was just recapping, like, all of my wounds from mm. what I did and stuff. Yeah. And just straight up, like, broke down uncontrollably, uncontrollably, wow. uncontrollably, <laughs> there we go, crying at a coffee shop. Oh, jeez. <laughs> which is In amazing. Public. But it's crazy because the people next to us were crying mm. about something else. Oh, and my wow. friend was like, you know you're in Franklin when everyone's just, like, crying at a coffee shop. I love shop. Nashville. <laughs> I, know, I love right? it. In Nashville, too. And so – but one of the most powerful things she said to me uh, was, Kira, that is the most real I have ever seen you. Like, that is the most Kira I've ever seen because you are so, like, broken open. You're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You're letting people in right now. Like, you're uncontrolled. Yeah. And you're just letting yourself be uncontrolled. And it's beautiful. And it's like, you don't have to hold it together. You mm -hmm. can just be, and that's it. And, like, that just reminds me yeah. of of what happened with me it sounds like you were probably uncontrolled yeah mm -hmm. and yeah. there was no keeping it in because you're like so uncontrolled yeah. that it's like nope it's all coming out if yeah. you like it or not yeah. and it needs to happen yeah and, yeah, and so. it's almost it's kind of like it's not i didn't black out but i felt like <laughs> okay yes it's like it's I, like I, you feel you i kind of felt like i was in another world for a second and like again i had told my story plenty of times mm -hmm. before this that's why i thought it was weird but because i was just like clearly uncontrolled mm -hmm. I was just like going and going. <laughs> like I, I don't think I was making sense half the time. But <laughs> I love that. I know, right? And it was the most like real that a person had ever seen to me. Which it sounds like that was probably the first time for you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so strong. So, like around this time, you were really starting to pursue Christ in your life. Yeah. And also, well, was that think... around the time when you went on medication for the first yes. time? Yes. Okay. So. Like, my big saving grace was Christ. Okay. Um, and I owe, every, owe everything to him. Mm -hmm. um, but there was this whole stigma around medicine. Mm -hmm. And so I, that's why I always, like, push it off. And yeah. But when I saw and I read um, about how Christ finds your strengths and your weaknesses, mm -hmm. I started kind of accepting what I was going through. Yeah. And it was too much for me to do on my own. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? Like... I just want to be happy. I just yeah. want to like live my life and be who I want to be. Mm -hmm. And if that, if medicine can help me, like why not help myself? Yes. Like, I mean, you're the number one priority mm -hmm. at the end of the day, not yeah. other people. And yeah. so if I can find something that can help me, um, then that's what I'll do. And so not only was it my faith that helped me, it was also like the medicine. Okay. And so I ended up going medicine my sophomore year. My coach actually was like, um, cause I almost quit soccer and everything. Even, Dang. like, the love of my – like, it was one of my – like, yeah. I love soccer so much. So when it was stripped passion. from you, you were probably, like, angry about it. Oh, so and, like, angry. Bitter. Very. Yeah. Yes. And I was like, why is this happening yeah. to me? And, all this, and I was like, well, it's happening – it's not happening to me. It's happening for me. You know that? Yes. Yep. yep. And so, like, love I don't that. have to play. I get to play. Yeah. And so, um, so, like, sophomore year, I went into his office, and I was – being vulnerable with Courtney and Megan, like, kind of – led the whole <laughs> series of six years or yeah. like no it's only been for some since then like two years okay and so like that path into like opening up more and yeah. went to my coach's office and I was like okay I'm struggling mm. and he was like you need to talk to our sports psychologist and okay. I was like no and then he's yeah. like if you really want to like help yourself like yeah. you need to and I was like okay you're, you're right yeah like why do I need to be ashamed of getting help mm -hmm. like I said so you like, went to therapy yeah Love so therapy. ended up yeah and I went to um a spiritual therapist. I think that's what like she was more like. I wonder if we went to the same therapist. What's her name? Deborah. No, her name was Dang. Meg. <laughs> Dang it, because she was a Vanderbilt person. Oh, so I was okay, like, okay. I wonder if it's the same. Yes, and then um, I went to Vicki Harris for sports, yeah. and because a lot of my anxiety came from sports, and okay. um, we ended up discussing medicine, and I went on medicine, and it's trial and error, mm -hmm. and ended up changing my life. Yeah, like there's so much like negative. Yeah connotations around it and stigma mm -hmm. but like mental health is like 
a real thing. It is. And yeah. you can be the strongest person in the world, but doing it alone is still super hard. Yes, and this absolutely. is like it stabilizes you. And yep. there's and like I'm all about like meditation and yeah. strategies and support groups and mm-hmm. all that stuff and like so you, to it's help kind you. Of the whole thing. Yes. And like yeah. I don't think the medicine is just like we're going off on a tangent. I'm fine with that. But like I don't <laughs> think it's just like the end all be all. Yes. Because one day I really hope to go off of it. There's like other strategies that I think help me so much and okay. having other people to be around where I can actually like talk about it and help them now through it. Yes. And so that's the big thing. And now I'm not ashamed of being on medication. Yeah. And now like I used to hide it at first. Okay. So no one knew I was on it for about a year and a half. Did well, you ever have to year. take it around people? Oh, like, I always hit it. Okay. Oh, it was so easy. Dang. Cause like, yeah, I was taking like other like pills cause of my yeah. knee. Okay. So it was like easy. Just be like, Oh, oh that's like, nice. What are you yeah. doing? I was like, Oh my ibuprofen. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. That's easy to hide. Dang. Yes. <laughs> and, but the only reason my coach is the only one that knew and my okay. trainer, Melby, who was okay. a big help in all this. Too. Okay. But dang. Okay. And so you started seeing a therapist mm-hmm. too at the same time. And like, What do you feel like that did for you? Because for me, it was almost like the first time that it really allowed me to fully Mm self-reflect. Like I always knew what was going on with me at all times, but like it really allowed me to dive deep into like trauma and Mm. like going back into my childhood and looking at things and like how people affected me, all that kind of stuff. Is Um, that what it did for you? Yeah. So even with um, when I was kind of like really like – telling everyone like not everyone but Mm -hmm. Megan and Courtney what happened um I still don't tell them everything yeah because like there's always some things that you're like it's too dark yeah Yeah. (laughs) and it's also very personal yes and so I was like but it still needs to come out to someone and I think with professionals like psychologists um Mm -hmm. and it's such a private like they cannot yes. tell anyone unless yeah. you're gonna harm or hurt or right. so, yeah yeah and so which is thank god that did they, you yeah. study social work yeah dude yeah i did too no way <laughs> i literally am looking I at myself <laughs> <laughs> this is wild because i was like as soon as you started saying the reason why you can the only reason why you can say it out loud i was yeah. like she must have studied social I, work yeah. <laughs> a little bit um, just That's because, crazy. like, I was affected by it. So I'm like, yeah. why not study? I didn't need to study it, but I was yeah. like, I want to know more. And, yeah. like, I was like, I want to know why. I'm, why Wait, was this that your way? major? No. Um, no, my okay. minor. Okay. Yeah. So Still like, apart. Dang. Yeah. So I was like, you know. But, yeah. and so I ended up being able to, like, tell them everything mm-hmm. and really get that out and, like, to realize, like, I'm not crazy and what yeah. happened in my past wasn't okay and mm-hmm. wasn't my fault. And yeah. hearing that from someone else and, like, someone being there for you and, like, you're not alone in it. Yes. And, like, you haven't been hiding it. It's, like, the most terrifying and, like, powerful healing mm-hmm. thing that could ever happen. Yeah. And so, like, I'm so happy I ended up going. Yeah. And now I really don't go any, like, much anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't feel a need right Mm-mm. now. Yeah. I yeah. feel that. But I do have my ups and downs. And yeah. so I... You could go back Exactly. Anytime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now I'm more That's comfortable going. Too. And, like, I know I have that support behind mm-hmm. me. So I'm, like, if I ever, anything ever goes yeah. wrong or I dip back down, mm-hmm. I have like new strategies and new people I can go to. Yes. So I'll never go back to how I used to be. Yeah. So what do you feel like is probably the maybe like three keys or it doesn't have to be like a number Mm -hmm. of keys, but like (laughs) the couple different things that you really feel like have helped you to fully own your truth and like I say, unlock your freedom Mm -hmm. because it sounds like owning it has been a huge thing for you. But what else does that look like? Um, So a big thing is – um, I really like my passion now is just helping people. Mm. And so I always told myself that like Satan loves silence. Yep. And if I can at least help one person mm-hmm. with what I say or mm-hmm. sh- being vulnerable or showing them that I did it and yeah. it's okay to feel this way and to get help, mm-hmm. then it was all worth it. Yeah. And so now I'm like, instead of like keeping it inside and like being ashamed, I'm like, well, if I get it out, I can help someone else that they don't have to go through what I went through yes. or don't have to go through something terrible and mm-hmm. traumatic yeah and so that's why i'm like unlocking my freedom yeah and speaking about it more mm-hmm. and not being as closed off about it yeah. so i'm like there's everyone struggling with someone mm-hmm. or with something yeah and if i'm not alone so if i can say something then no, no one has to, that person doesn't have to hide it until yes. they're 20 and it's like an invitation yeah. for yeah. them to just share yeah. it as well and i've like i've like now, like, one of my friends just went on medication, okay. and they are struggling, and now they are 
just got a job and yeah. everything's so much better. And I have yeah. another per- like another one of my friends that's finally seeing the sports psychologist okay. because she grew up in like this perfectionism like household mm-hmm. and everything had to be perfect. And now she's yeah. not playing too much and okay. things get hard and mm-hmm. and now they know that like they don't have to be this way and that they yes. can get help from other people and they're yes. not considered weak. They're actually considered strong. Yes. And so like seeing that happens, it's like, it's all worth it. Yeah. And it makes me happy because I'm like, okay, like even though it kind of like gets to my stomach yeah. speaking about yeah, it, yeah. like if seeing someone else benefit and like mm-hmm. seeing them like actually be happy makes me happy. Yeah. So, so you feel like you and maybe your story are like sort of a, like a hope for other people then? I love the word hope. Yeah. That's one of Dude, my favorite same. quotes. I yeah. love it. And uh, for me, it stands for hold on pain ends. So H-O-P-E. Whoa. Where'd you so, learn that? Or did you come um, up with it? I saw it like a couple years ago. I forgot where I saw it on. And it's always been, so I have it tattooed on the back of my neck. Dude, okay. Yeah. And so. Um, Just the word hope or like says hold on pain ends. So I ended up actually living with indigenous tribes in New Zealand a couple wow. years ago. And, oh my gosh, um, that's cool. I, yeah, it was pretty <laughs> awesome. And um. Uh, they're Maori and they're called okay. the Waitaw and I got it in their language. This is Manawa Ora. So cool. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And it was what a life. Cool. Yeah. It's, pretty, <laughs> it's been a pretty amazing blessed one. For Dang. Sure. Mm-hmm. Wait. Okay. Talk about that a little. Like, <laughs> So that was the sophomore year somewhere when everything was going down. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. Was that sort of like a retreat for you almost? Oh my gosh. It was life changing. So that's Dang. when like my coach was like, take the month of May. Okay. Figure everything out. And mm-hmm. it was very spiritual. And yeah. the chief, um, the papa, was mm-hmm. very religious and spiritual. Okay. And his whole thing was, like, do no harm. Hurt, like, no one. And Interesting. You're made the way that you're made. And yeah. they had so many cool traditions. And uh, they had no cell phones. Like, I was so cool. blocked off from the world. Yeah. And I was just trying to figure out who I was as a person and really accept who I was. Mm-hmm. And I came back a totally different person. Even my coach was like, what happened to you? And I was like, well, first of all, my God happened yeah. to me. Mm-hmm. And he was able through this trip to show me that who I am is fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. Psalm 139, mm-hmm. 14, which is yep. my favorite Bible verse. Yes. And um, so ever since then, I just held on to that and I held on to hope. Yeah. And I'm like, we all go through pain in mm-hmm. our life. And it, everyone's is different. We handle it all differently because we're all different people. But at the end of the day, we do have a choice if like we want to suffer or not. Because yes. like you have that own choice to be like, well, I'm going to let this affect right. me a certain way. And so I define my entire yes, life and yeah. like have that control over you. And yeah. I'm like, pain's already having some sort of control. So I'm not yes. going to let it have like my whole life. Yes. And so I was like, it's going to end. Mm-hmm. Like I'm kind of afraid of like public speaking and all yeah. that stuff but I'm like it's gonna end in a couple minutes yeah. or like you know or like the beef test in soccer it's gonna end in like 15 minutes and 30 seconds yeah. and like or something like that yeah. like it does end it might yeah. be a year or two mm-hmm. years or whatever because we deal with so many different things I but know. it does end so mm-hmm. I'm like I gotta just think about the end result too yeah so when you feel like maybe like thoughts of well even like self-harming and stuff yeah. when anything like that when that comes back into your mind yeah. How do you, like, overcome that and, like, overpower it? Um, so it's still really hard, and yeah. it still happens. Like, mm-hmm. just because we're saved or you yep. turn a stone and you do – you're feeling so much better and you have yeah. these new strategies and medicine and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not the end-all be-all. Yeah. Like, you have hills and valleys. You do. And wells, mm-hmm. yeah. And so I do have a lot of valleys. Like, yeah. it's – we're not perfect, and so – even like a couple of weeks ago, I was in a really dark place again. Mm-hmm. And I just started like rehearsing my mind again. Like, I don't want to go back to that person that I was. Mm. And I don't want to hurt myself ever again because like you are like God made you. You are yeah. a temple, mm-hmm. like your body is a temple. Yep. And hurting me would be hurting him. Yes. And so I do think about that. Yeah. And I think about all the progress I've made. Mm-hmm. And to do that again, I like. And just like keep building it up in my mind. I was like, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. And like, it's not always like the easiest. Sometimes like it does progress. And then I'm like, okay, but you're also like, like you're loved. Yep. And you're not alone. Mm -hmm. And now. So you know the truth. Yes. But it's still still, hard. hard. Yeah. And like you can rehearse that self to you like self so many times. And like I'll put on worship music because it gets me in a good mood. I used to put on like sad, depressing music. Dude, same. Love depressing music. Yes. It's amazing. (laughs) But then I'm like. Helps you to express your emotions. Yes. I'll say that's a good part And like you need them sometimes. And then other times it's like if you put yourself in an environment to just like make you feel better. So Mm -hmm. then I'll put on like my favorite Tori Kelly songs. Yes. Like stuff like that. And so I make myself feel better and that stuff. Or if it 
keeps getting worse, then I go talk to someone okay. to, before I get back to the point of harming myself again. Because yeah. I have gone back before, mm-hmm. and it's been a really long time, thank, yeah. thank God. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just never want to go back there, and I know it's – I say I never want to go back there, but I know it might happen. Mm-hmm. But at least I have new steps and yes. like, people and a support group and all that yeah. stuff. So I'm not and, as terrified. Yeah, and I think one of the like biggest things – just for people to know is like just because you've unlocked your freedom yeah. does not mean that it all ends right no. there. Like I think the enemy is going to continue to tempt us throughout our entire lives. Like for my situation, I'm not really sure I'm ever going to go back to what I did specifically, like yeah, the yeah. Ma- my big addiction. Yeah. But I do think like I have problems with like binge eating and stuff. So yeah. like that could potentially always be a struggle for me. Yeah. And like I think – Christine Kane is one of my, like, absolute favorite authors and speakers. You know who she yeah, is probably. Yeah. yeah, okay. I was like, if you go to the blog, you probably know who she is. <laughs> but uh, she, like, her book, Unashamed, just really showed me that your journey with whatever you're going through does not have to be, like, it's not this overnight thing, which I know is, like, kind of cliche, but it's, like, it's a journey. Yes. It's, like, every single day – week month year like you're gonna have to try and like really build yourself back up again and find that inner strength like the holy spirit all that kind of stuff find the truths to like really what's the word like overpower i guess the enemy's voices Mm -hmm. it's not just you're not just done with it no yeah yeah my favorite quote um is by nelson mandela and it's like the greatest glory in living it's not in never falling but in rising every time you fall mm. so i'm like okay you're gonna take step back so you're gonna and fall. it builds your strength exactly yes. and like why like i don't want to go through life just being this like complacent person or yeah. like because i was so afraid of failure mm-hmm. i would literally not go to things but then i would never yeah. succeed because i'm like i'm not doing it yeah so i'm paralyzing myself again yep. from growing and strengthening myself because yep. I wasn't doing it but I'm like if you fall you just get back up and yes. then you like surpass that person that you already were yep. and you just keep getting better and better and happier and happier yeah. and, and now you're not afraid to fall because you're you not know, afraid because you know what's gonna happen mm-hmm. like it's inevitable and yep. if people know that then it's like you have good and bad days and they're not like why am I bad again like why am I feeling like this yeah. again but it's like there are better days ahead again because yeah. you know there are good days. Yes. And so, and now you know how to handle the bad days way better than you did before. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so you do keep growing. So I like well, that. and I would imagine it probably gets easier with age just because like <laughs> I hope so. to me, I feel like the thing is, I mean, there's going to be new obstacles all the time, but like at least like, okay, well you, did you go the belonging when Paul spoke recently? Like the last time he spoke, and yes. it, it was create. Uh, like I'm created to think versus conditioned to yes, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the biggest thing for me in all that was like, we've been conditioned for so long. Not not just like our families, but like generations upon generations upon generations. Yeah. We've been conditioned to think certain things about ourselves, certain things about God, certain things about the world, all that kind of stuff. And those conditions are going to take a really long time to just break down. Mm-hmm. Like it's not just going to be an overnight thing. So like, but I do think it gets easier. With age, when you keep telling yourself the truth and it's mm-hmm. like actually speaking what we are created to think because we're going to stop or we're going to start breaking down those conditions yeah. and they're going to like become a quieter voice in our mind. I love that. Dude, right? That's so when cool. he said that, I was like, oh, heck. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, but it's so true. Well, and I don't know, like, I don't know if this speaks into your life at all right now or anything, but it's spoken into my life right now and like several of my friends just like from that same sermon that he gave Mm. was just the simple verse that I've never really meditated over until now is though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And the reason why it's so powerful for me is like, I think I'm going, I'm starting to think a lot about like my past again Mm -hmm. and stuff. And there is that looming shadow of death. Mm -hmm. It seems it's perceived as like this really dark place that the enemy is like telling me, don't go back there. It's too scary. You don't want to do that. Like, don't do it. But God is like, I'm already here. I'm in that place already. So, like, come, follow me. Yeah. And trust that, like, you are protected and that I've got you and you don't have to fear evil. So I want you to walk through this valley yes. of the shadow, which the shadow of death thing was the coolest thing for me because it's literally, like, it's not necessarily a truth. It's just, like, a perception. Yes, it's there so There is this shadow that's, like, darkness looming over it. But God is like, Lord. it's just a shadow. Mm-hmm walk there I'm already there Mm -hmm. follow me and you don't have to fear any evil when you do it 
And it's like the I love that. And it's like, I know. Uh, I think it's John one nine, and mm-hmm. he's like I'm, like. I'm with you wherever you go. Yes. So when when you he's just said that, all around us. So he's going with you. Yes. That chat. And so he's I like preparing that. the way. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. I so know, you're never right? alone. I don't. Good. And the crazy thing is, like, I don't always speak scripture like this. Yes, but me either. I'm finding myself doing it so much more lately, and it's just like whether it's scripture or a quote or like positive mm-hmm. affirmations, that kind of stuff. It's just like whatever that truth is over your life, yeah. like speak it over your life until you believe it, because that is going to help you which again paul is talking about it's like uh what did what did he call it uh it's like not retraining your mind but it's like Ooh, i like that though like recreating or something like that i can't yeah he it's, called it something really cool and i was i've been saying it a lot but now i forget it of course <laughs> but basically it's like retraining your mind to think a different way so you know like the cli- like the cliche like fake it till you make it yes so it's like when when you just talked like about like recreating your mind yeah. like that so like when i think about it because i used to always tell myself like fake it till you make it but i'm like why yeah. do you have to fake it when you can use like because i used to never quote scripture mm-hmm. like i didn't even know any scripture yeah. until like a year ago yeah. or anything like that and so i started feeling like i used to say fake it till you make it and now yeah. i'm like why fake it when i can like use things like yes. what you're talking about like scripture and mm-hmm. recreating my mind to make it yes so instead of faking it like becoming it these now. things yeah. yeah and then i'm actually doing it yes and like it's less exhausting you feel better yeah. and and I'll be honest, I used to judge people. I know we're kind of going off topic, but whatever. This is a podcast, Love it. so you can do it. <laughs> so I used to like, whenever people would just speak like tons of scripture, yeah, I'd be yeah. like, oh, you get kind of turned off. I'm like, you're so yeah. overly spiritual. You're so... But now, like, now I understand it. Mm-hmm. And it's not even because it's coming from the Bible. It's just like, it is a truth of your life that you should be speaking over your life because mm-hmm. it's way more positive than the way more positive and way more real and way more truthful than the crap that we are conditioned to think since day one from the world. Like, so you should want to speak that over your life. And now I get why people do it. I love that. I know. I feel like I'm looking at myself right now. (laughs) Again, I feel like I'm looking and talking to myself through you. So I love this. (laughs) It's the wildest thing. Um, So who would you say Gabrielle Rademacher? There we go. I got it right this time. Uh, who would you say she is like now in this journey that you've really oh, unlocked wow. your freedom? I think I'm like real, if that makes yeah, sense. Like I'm totally. a real person yeah. <laughs> and I'm authentic. I love that word that we were talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm less like tired and exhausted because from hiding yourself from so yes. much and like I don't feel paralyzed. Mm-hmm. Now I can go out and go on a podcast yeah, and talk right? to you. Crazy. Crazy. People still <laughs> think like no one would have ever thought I would ever do And you're like, like I'm a bad public speaker. Okay, well, this is public speaking, sort of. Still a little time And you're doing time, fine. It'll end soon. <laughs> you're doing actually great, Thank not you. just fine. So. Um, but And I have relationships. So I was just telling you, yeah. I'm in my first ever mm-hmm. really serious so relationship. Cool. Yeah. We just moved in together. Yeah. And I never had that. I have mm-hmm. a best friend now. Yeah. Um, I love myself. Mm. I have such a great relationship with God. And yeah. every day it gets stronger. Yeah. And um, I'm happy. Mm, yes. And I'm not ashamed of who I am. Yeah. And I'm not embarrassed. Now people know who my family is. They yeah. know where I live. And, so cool. Yes. And yeah. And I get to help other people too. Yeah. So that's who Gabrielle Radmaker is. I guess, so, so cool. Okay. And so you feel like you like really probably have compassion for yourself and for other people now too. Yeah. Because yeah. now you can like relate mm-hmm. too. And they can relate with you. Yeah. And when they see someone else unlocking their freedom and owning mm-hmm. their truth and yeah. um, seeing that people go through this stuff, then, you know. It's hope. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you feel better, too, because you're like, and then you hear other people and you're like, wow, like, I mean, talking to you right now, like, I'm yeah. like, wow, like, we've. We're literally very, the yes. same person. And I'm like, well, I haven't been alone this whole time. Yes. And you know, but I would have yeah. never figured that out if mm-hmm. we would have never opened up. Right. So. If you weren't telling your story to those two people, yeah. you would never be telling it here. And I think yeah. that is that is one of the biggest things that I'm friends with, like, YouTubers and stuff. And they always say how, like, there are certain things that you need to keep for just your, your loved ones and certain things that, like, online you can share. But there is – there's you don't want to share everything online Mm-mm. because, like, I mean, at the end of the day, those people don't necessarily know you. And it's, like, if you can tell those – to those 10 Mm -hmm. most important people in your life whoever that is that's like where you need to start Mm -hmm. 
and then you can worry about sharing yourself online afterwards yes. but you don't have to mm-hmm. like you definitely don't have to as long as you can tell the people that are in your circle in life that is really powerful kind of mm-hmm. more that's awesome i know right i like that well, because I always wanted to tell my story first on here, yeah, like yeah. not on a podcast, but like publicly, because yeah. I at first I was like, oh, I would love to prop myself up because I'm insecure. <laughs> but then it took a lot longer than I was expecting. Mm-hmm. And I'm so glad because yeah. I'm doing it for the right reasons. Now. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. So great. And like um, you said, there's still not everything like you want to share to everyone because yeah. it I'm is not so sacred. Share all the yes. Yeah. Especially like, yeah. Cause you yeah. don't know who's watching and Like you said, people don't understand you and they can yeah. take it the wrong way or yes. have this opinion. Cause we all have those. Yes. And so the and people that trust you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really don't. That's way too. There's certain yeah. personal things where I'm like, you don't need to know yeah. this about my life. <laughs> and I probably don't need to know that of other people. Yes. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, it's all, it, it all works. Yeah. Well, and I just want to acknowledge you because like, well, first of all, you said you never even check your Instagram <laughs> messages, and somehow you yes. you check mine, so that was pretty exciting. Oh so gosh. I just want to acknowledge you for coming on today, because I know you said you've never really done anything like this before, and that's freaking cool that this is the first time. But also, like, that you are still in the journey of mm-hmm. all this. Like, you are able to be free in a lot of ways, but you are still, like, processing things, and mm-hmm. you're still dealing with certain things, and you're still able to talk about it, and yeah. I just think that's the power of telling your story is it's, like, it's not easy, and it doesn't necessarily make your life, like, a ton easier, but, like, <laughs> it does chip away at the shame, and it chips away at, like, the pain that you have to deal with, yeah. and so I, I just want to acknowledge you for really Thank telling you. your story. While you're in the process of it. That's the whole point of this. Do it in the process. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we're always in the process. Yes, we are. Life is a process. But thank you for having me on this. Of like course. I feel honored being on here and for you even reaching out to me. Dude. So. Yes. I'm so excited. And the fact that we're literally the same yeah. person. And I think I found new friends. Yes. So. <laughs> I love when that happens. Right? It's crazy. <laughs> you like, would you want someone to go follow you on social? Yeah, you totally I don't mean, have to say that. It was just during my fast. So I was doing like the okay. prayer and fast and then I took away. Good for you. Social media, and I kind of do it a lot, so that's where I get in trouble. It's because I really don't use my phone, (laughs) and a lot of people get mad at me for it. So I'm trying to do better. I'm like, I'm, I'm growing. Literally, all my friends are terrible at texting, so I've become a terrible. Okay, so we can be great friends then. So. This works. I just embrace it. That's why I'm like, everyone sucks at texting, I mean, I so it's fine. So, but yes, all I have is Instagram. Okay. It's only social media, and it's okay. just Gabrielle Rademacher. Cool. So, just like at Gabrielle Rademacher. Pretty easy. Cool. Yeah. Easy enough. We'll link it. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Thank you so much for watching slash listening to our conversation today. And if you want more life-giving conversations like what you heard today, click that big red subscribe button and join the Freedom Family with us. So you can DM me on Twitter or Instagram. Follow me. Feel free. You will find the most weird, wild content, but also some hopefully inspiring content as well. So yeah, appreciate you for tuning in today and we can't wait to see you next time. Bye.